I first met John and Suzanne in 1992. I contacted Suzanne about potentially doing a PhD in her lab after I completed my infectious diseases training. She said, sure, uh, why don't you meet me and my partner, John Mills, for dinner? I then promptly, because Suzanne's very efficient, received a message from her then PA, Cathy Tolley, to meet for dinner in Chapel Street, South Yarra, the following week. I was a little taken aback. Um, my career to date had been largely one of autocratic medical consultants, ward rounds and bruising hospital rosters. Work colleagues didn't do civilised things like have dinner and chat about your career. So I was to learn this was business, Suzanne and John style. I'd have to say that dinner wasn't really a smashing success. In fact, John spent the whole time trying to talk me out of a career in research, which I sort of was puzzled to understand. And I later heard he was just really testing how authentic my desire really was. They then grudgingly accepted me, and I did my PhD under their excellent supervision at the Burnett when it was at Fairfield from 1993 to 1996. Now in my first week at work, I recall walking into Suzanne's office and looking at her Ansel Adams calendar that she'd have pinned on the wall. And it was packed without a spare spot of white paper, Indonesia one week, Sydney the next, San Francisco the next. And I can remember thinking, I want a calendar just like that. Now I'm now actually beginning to regret it, I think. At, perhaps not at that meeting, but that only a couple of weeks later, I actually then went in to tell her that I was pregnant with my first child. And at the time, I honestly thought this was going to be the end of my career, or really being the end of anyone ever taking me seriously. But in true Suzanne's style, she squealed with excitement, gave me a big hug, and I suspect pretended it was no big deal for me to finish my PhD. And when I think back on that 26 years ago, that was a really unusual response. It had a really big impact on me as a woman. And lots and lots of people asked me about, um, you know, major mentors for me. And it was Suzanne especially not flinching for a second and really getting behind me no matter what was going to happen. Suzanne didn't have children and she fully understood uh, the sort of challenges that me and I think many of her other you know, women mentees were facing. I think you heard earlier, Suzanne and John are really true clinician scientists and probably the first that I personally had ever met. Passionate clinicians uh, with their main drive for research being to improve clinical care. And again, these creatures in the early 90s in Australia were actually unusual, especially people that wanted to marry basic research and clinical care. Hospitals and research institutes were miles apart. We're seeing a very different world now. But they really showed me that they could be intertwined and that they needed to be intertwined and certainly had a profound effect on my thinking, as you heard from Steve, I think, and many of the people that trained with them. I then spent some time in New York and at the University of Melbourne and came back as Director of Infectious Diseases and worked with Suzanne and John again. Um, this time as their boss, as Director of Infectious Diseases here. As Suzanne's colleague, we were co-director of the Centre for Virology at the Burnett and confidant and friend. And through this later phase, I really learned some very important personal lessons that I'd like to share with you. But before I get to that, I, I want to contact very, com comment very briefly about Suzanne's contributions um, to science. Um, having worked myself in HIV basic research for the last 25 years, and I want to just highlight three areas. Suzanne made some unbelievably important clinical observations. One of those were the different diseases people get at different CD4 counts. An incredibly astute observation highly clinically relevant, and I still use that figure from that seminal paper in every lecture I give to medical students on HIV. You heard about Suzanne's work on macrophages in HIV, and that didn't just stop as showing that macrophages were a critical cell being infected. 
She went on to show there were a critical reservoir for HIV on treatment and very important in mediating inflammation, now a major complication of people living with HIV. And she maintained that very clear theme on HIV macrophages throughout her career. And that, again, has been a really important lesson. She never really wavered from her number one area of expertise, but managed to alter the focus to answer the questions of relevance. A lot of trends have come and gone in HIV research, and Suzanne really just um, stayed focused. A really important lesson which I often speak about to my students. Suzanne also did some really innovative um, and creative research and often used technology to answer a major problem. When I think about it, I actually find it extraordinary because most of you know she's a real technophobe. Suzanne actually dictated her emails for the first 10 years that email was around because she couldn't, and print them out because she couldn't write them herself. And I think she only got a mobile phone in the last few years and still doesn't know how to use message bank. But she did, um, she did do some extraordinary things. One of them was um, working out how to measure whether, whether HIV was inside DNA or outside DNA. She was with John and Suzanne together and developed a assay which um, uses, you know, which detects you know, ho um, host DNA and HIV DNA together to measure integrated DNA. It's widely used now in um, HIV cure research and very few people know, but I certainly do and make sure I tell everyone that it was discovered by John and Suzanne. And of course the CD4 test that we'll hear more about, brilliantly innovative um, way of uh, taking um, point of care tests to low income country. So finally, just a few lessons from Suzanne and John on a very personal level. Work hard, play hard. And for Suzanne, it also includes shop hard. <laughs> Never quite seen anyone do the three so well as John and Suzanne. They take the concept of work-life balance to another level. There is no balance. They just do both to the maximum, do both really well, and never one at the expense of another. Curiosity. Curiosity for science, the world, and people. John and Suzanne are always enthusiastic about new ideas, new places, new restaurants, new ways of thinking. I've watched John for years keep a little pad in his suit pocket. Actually, even when he's not wearing a suit, he's got that little pad somewhere. And he'll pull it out and drop down a note, whether it's in a clinical order at the Alfred, he's done it for the last 12 years, whether it's a plenary session at a major meeting, he's always thirsty for new knowledge. Generosity. Generous with their ideas, experiences and contacts. John and Suzanne are always trying to connect and help people. I've personally been the beneficiary of many, um, and many, many introductions, but two transformative ones. The first was David Ho, Time Magazine Man of the Year in 1996 for the discovery of modern day antiviral therapy. He was an old friend of John and Suzanne, and it was through their generous connection that I had the chance to do my postdoc with David in New York at what was the most exciting place and time in HIV research anywhere. The next introduction was India. My husband, Bob, and I, my first trip there was with John and Suzanne, and it's been a three-way love affair ever since. That's Bob, me in India, in case you're trying to think <laughs> what ways that was working. Um, kindness and compassion. Um, unfailingly, I've seen this with patients, with colleagues, students, friends. They've both always been there for many of us here in this room at any and at all times. And therefore, they're an adoring circle of friends. And finally, and perhaps most relevant today, our managing transition gracefully. I've watched Suzanne doing this over the last 30 years. From clinician, you heard about that with Ian, to laboratory scientist here at the Burnett. From pathogenesis research to implementation research. 
She does this with certainty and confidence, and what she leaves behind, she leaves for others to enjoy. And she somehow never looks behind. I suspect the next very big transition is going to be just the same. Suzanne and John, we will miss you in HRE science. We will miss you in the clinic, but we will watch with great interest for all that hard work, all that hard play, all that curiosity in the world, kindness and compassion will take you next. And I'm sure onto even greater things. Thank you.